All right, it's an honor to speak here today about work which I actually did in uh, collaboration with Pat. I met Pat first at a congress in Florence in 1994, and a student of his attended my talk, and the next day Pat wanted to speak to me. I was delighted, and uh, since then we had many conversations, mostly about physics, but also about many other things, and this work started about two years ago or so. Here's a quote from the Stanford Encyclopedia entry on quantum logic and probability theory. It says that it's uncontroversial, so remarkable, that the formal apparatus of quantum mechanics reduces neatly to a generalization of classical probability in which the role played by a Boolean algebra of events in the latter is taken over by the quantum logic of projection operators on Hilbert space. That's what the Stanford Encyclopedia says, but I think Pat disagrees with this. He has been uh, defending uh, a different view, according to which we should keep the algebra fixed and change the probabilistic structure. Uh, more particularly, Pat works with upper and lower probabilities and shows that things uh, work. At least that's what he wants to show. However, it's fair to say that despite all his efforts, uh, upper and lower probabilities are not so popular in physics and they are also not so popular in the foundations of physics, at least so far. So instead, quantum logic is booming. Certainly, again, after quantum computation became a hot topic. Uh, what I want to do in this short presentation is to add another reason why one should uh, look at uh, and take seriously upper and also lower probabilities uh, in quantum mechanics and that the research program that had kicked off uh, is certainly worth uh, following. I can't go into the details, so I will focus on the big picture and I apologize to the experts who know much more about this than I do. Here's the structure of the talk quite straightforwardly. I first talk a bit about uppers and lowers, then about quantum mechanics, and finally I bring the two uh, together. So what are imprecise uh, probabilities? The idea is that we want to represent ignorance about the probability value. And the idea is then to introduce a lower probability and an upper probability, which could, for example, be zero and one if we don't know anything. But then in the course of learning, uh, the two converge to the uh, two uh, probability values. If one axiomatizes this and Pat likes to axiomatize things, then we come up with a structure where upper probabilities are sub-additive and lower probabilities are super-additive, so it can be nicely uh, formalized. The interpretation is also quite straightforward. Uh, Wally argued that upper and lower probabilities reflect minimal and maximum betting odds. Yeah, so that's, that's sort of a Mickey Mouse picture that illustrates uh, the situation here. Question is, of course, what has all this to do uh, with quantum mechanics? So I talk for a minute about quantum mechanics. Consider four random variables, a, a prime, b, b prime, which can take two values, plus one and minus one. Then one can define this quantity f here. e is uh, the expectation value of this product, a, uh, b, uh, which measures the correlation between a and b, can also take two values and anything in between, actually. Uh, and uh, these expectations uh, uh, can be uh, observed. Now, Clauser, Horn, Shimoni, and Ho generalized the bad inequality and showed that if there is a joint probability distribution over these four variables, then this quantity f is smaller or equal to 2. Uh, it's just it follows from the existence of a joint uh, probability distribution. Now it turns out that quantum mechanics violates this inequality. That is, there are systems which have stronger correlations, correlations that where, where this f is greater than 2. Right? Um, so a standard example is 
the EPR state, which is this kind of superposition of, for example, spin up and spin down for a two uh, particle uh, state. Now one can define angles alpha and alpha prime on one side, and beta and beta prime on the other side, measure the two systems, uh, and uh, just detect uh, the correlations that hold between these measurement outcomes. And it turns out that if one sets the angles appropriately, then one gets a value of 2 square root of 2 for this quantity f, which is, of course, greater than 2. So quantum mechanics violates those inequalities. Typically, the experiments are done with photons. Uh, for various reasons, I think it's nicer, uh, Pat disagrees, uh, to do this with atoms. So one can look at two-level atoms, one can bring them in an EPR state, and uh, define uh, quantities, measurement operators A, B, A prime, B prime in this way through the Pauli matrices. And if one does so, can do the experiment, it turns out that again the uh, quantity um, F is 2 square root of 2. We have a maximal violation of the band inequalities. Right? So that, that's all uh, well known. The new concept I would like to bring in in this context here is the concept of decoherence. The idea is if we have such an entangled state of two atoms, it will sooner or later decay. So sooner or later, all atoms will be in the ground state. Right? And uh, one can describe the dynamics of this state, and one can use this to calculate the correlations, A, B, A prime, B prime, and so forth, as a function of time. Plug it in the clauser horn shimoni hold uh, inequality, and one will find out that after a certain period of time, actually very shortly after the state starts decaying, these inequalities are satisfied, which means that a joint probability distribution exists, which also means that a, that a classical description, a classical story can be told, which uh, tells us how these uh, correlations uh, uh, come about. So that's uh, uh, quite remarkable. The question is, however, what happens before? Yeah? Before a joint distribution exists, how can we account for the correlation in this regime? Uh, how can the rather strong quantum correlations be uh, explained here. Yeah? And as you might have guessed already, that's how uh, imprecise uh, probabilities uh, come in. To cut a long story short, what one can show is, at least for this Bell EPR case, that there is always a typically non-unique upper probability distribution that converges to the joint distributions once the clauser horn shimoni hold inequality is satisfied. Yeah? So we have here a situation, unlike in the classical case, where we always have a joint distribution, we just don't know it, and we define others and allow us to reflect our uncertainty about it. Here we have the situation that there is no joint, at least for a certain time, and once it exists, we can show that the uppers and lowers uh, converge into that joint uh, distribution. To qualify this, we can always find an upper, often also a lower, but not in all cases. And certainly the lowers uh, will not follow this uh, law, uh, sorry, the lowers will not uh, follow this law, which is uh, typically uh, assumed. So one has to uh, define or calculate uh, the lowers uh, uh, independently. So uh, uppers and lowers seem to, to have a place in quantum mechanics. I don't think it's trivial or obvious that we can always find uh, such uh, uppers and lowers uh, in uh, the quantum uh, context. Yeah? So, so that's the situation in a, in a sketchy uh, picture. So the upshot or the point I would like to make here is that decoherence, which is an important phenomenon recognized everywhere as a fundamental uh, property of, of quantum systems. They decay, they uh, uh, evaporate entanglement in the environment. Decoherence fits well into the picture of upper and lower probability distribution.